Before we get started, I just have to uh, thank the uh, great folks in St. Louis, Missouri for making NRA members feel so welcome. I uh, stopped off at a little uh, neighborhood bar uh, slash grill uh, this afternoon, had a uh, delicious mushroom and Swiss burger, and everybody was so happy that uh, the NRA is in town. And then I had somebody hand me this. This is a gift card from the uh, 15 Steakhouse. This is Jim Edmonds. Steakhouse, the uh, former uh, St. Louis Cardinal. I don't know if you can see this or not. It says, uh, uh, Jim Edmonds, 15 Steakhouse, welcomes the NRA. We are CCW friendly and supporters of the NRA. And then right there on the inside is a gift card that they're actually giving out to NRA members. So how about that? I mean, you can't get a better welcome than, hey, come on in, bring your, uh, uh, your sidearm with you, and have a nice steak dinner. Mark Keefe, Editor-in-Chief of American Rifleman, is with us. Mark, I don't know if you're going to have a chance to uh, actually go out and... <laughs> Eat dinner at all, but you are, you are more than welcome to this gift card because I don't think I'm going to be able to uh, leave the studio here, or at least leave the set. How well, cool is that? This is awesome. You know, it's funny. The uh, you can't carry a gun in the convention center, right? I don't know if you knew that. Yeah, and if yeah. you're carrying, you shouldn't. Uh, <laughs> so you know, I got the memo. Yeah, okay. you got the memo. Which, uh, but this is awesome. I mean, wh- how often do you see this? I, I don't remember seeing this before. I, I don't think. I, I mean, I, you know, every time we go to uh, an annual meeting, you see the restaurants uh, that, that have signs outside saying, you know, welcome in our members, come on in. And sometimes they're doing like specials. But yeah, this is the first time that I've actually seen. I mean, this is this was printed up. Specifically for the uh, the NRA yeah, coming no, to town. Th- That's this, pretty cool. This wasn't done today. Oh no, no, absolutely not. No. So how you been? Doing great, doing great. It's going to be a busy uh, busy weekend for me, as it usually is. Yeah, running some sessions. I've got the Golden Bullseye Awards tomorrow, honoring uh, the companies that had the most innovative products in 2012. I've got uh, John Plaster. Have you, do you know John? Uh, yes, uh, just a little bit. Just a little bit. Yeah. Well, Major John L. Plaster, probably the foremost uh, authority on sniping in the world. Uh, is going to run a session. Uh, I'm running a session where he's the featured speaker on Saturday, and it's called Sniper War Afghanistan. Oh, wow. And uh, it's going to be an incredible – I mean, it is a full-blown military-style briefing, and John Plaster is awesome. Oh, so, that is cool. Yeah, that that's uh, there, that's my Saturday. And yeah. Sunday I'm on with uh, 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 Martin K.A. Morgan, uh, soon to be Dr. Morgan. He's about finishing his Ph.D., but we're going to do another session um, on a half century of the USM-16 – uh, as America's combat rifle. So uh, I've got two really good sessions going, and I'm going to try and, you know, look at some booths, and uh, it's going to be a busy weekend. Uh, yes, it is. I'm glad you were able to sneak in uh, here on Thursday evening. So you can at least get a look around and maybe get a little <laughs> right. bit of the lay of the land. Right. You're, you're off the ground. You're elevated a little bit, so you can, uh, you know, scout out your location. Yeah, this is nice. I, I don't think I'd get lost in here. Yeah, no, this is a, uh, and again, this is a big darn room here full of uh, guns and gear acres and acres as we saw in the billboards coming in you know i've seen that too and there's a lot of interesting guns going on right now i don't know if you're aware uh today smith and wesson uh released the shield uh, military and police shield nine millimeter this is a single stack nine millimeter right? Uh, not quite no Uh, okay it's uh less than an inch it's like 0.98 wow uh, which is Technically less than an inch, if okay. you count thousands. <laughs> but uh, it, this this is promises to be perhaps best in category. This is a, uh, a six shot nine millimeter, and there is a there is a, a slight stacking to the magazine, but they kept everything very thin. Okay. Uh, but it's got slide lock. It's got a manual safety. Uh, it's got a takedown lever. Uh, it's got a better trigger, I think, a better trigger reset than the standard military and police, and they released it today. But the good news is they've been making them, and they've been sitting on it. This is the first time that Smith & Wesson. Really? Yeah, you know, Ruger has been wonderful about doing a gun, mm-hmm. making them, making sure they work, and then getting them out in distribution, and then saying, oh, by the way, we have this gun now, and, ooh, you could buy it if you wanted. <laughs> right. Or at least order it. And, right. And uh, it's, it's really been uh, a change in how gun companies do business. And this is the first time that Smith & Wesson has sat on something like this and then had it ready to go. And it, it's quite a good gun. I've shot it. My uh, assistant editor, uh, Joe Kurtenbach, uh, got a chance to go up to Smith & Wesson uh, and shoot it. And uh, it's a very promising 9 millimeter carry gun. That's awesome. And, you know, it, it's, it's great, too, to see these new products unveiled at the uh, NRA annual meetings as well. I mean, we talked at the uh, SHOT Show in Las Vegas, which, of course, is the, the trade show right. uh, for the industry. And that's where a lot of new products are unveiled. But we are starting to see more and more products being unveiled right here at the NRA show because this is where consumers 
get a chance to uh, uh, look at these guns. Uh, uh, imagine that. <laughs> and, you know, a lot of companies uh, have, have been deliberately holding products to the interannual meetings because they want that consumer response. Mm-hmm. But also, you know, you look at all the new guns that happen at a SHOT Show. Uh, you know, everybody's got a new gun. Uh, you know, everybody's going, oh, what's new? What's new? And then if you have a significant product, it can, it can get lost right. uh, in the wave of introductions. But here, you know, it's going to get to the point where – there are products that might get lost here because so many companies are introducing guns. And NRA members are the kind of people that, that these companies want to get the, those new products out in front of. Yeah, well, and now's a good time. I mean, you've had a piece in the uh, Daily Caller uh, just a couple of days ago, what's going on with gun sales. Uh, and we've talked about this a lot on the program. You know, there are a lot of media types uh, saying that this is uh, only because of the, uh, the election year. Nope. You say no. No, no, it's not. Um, obviously, there, there are uh, people who are concerned about the uh, clear and present threat mm-hmm. to the Second Amendment. We know it's, we know it's coming. It just hasn't come yet. But there, there are a lot of other reasons. There, there are people who aren't involved in politics at all that I know that are going out and buying guns. And I think there are a, a host of reasons. I think there are almost as many reasons as there are people who want to buy guns. The... Uh, Companies have been doing a very, very good job of making products that people want to buy. Mm -hmm. Uh, It used to be gun companies would say, well, you know, we can make this, so we're going to make it. And then they try and stuff it down people's throats. And if it's not something you want, you know, like a Winchester 1895 in 270, uh, (laughs) nobody wants to buy it. Right. Um, You know, so gun companies have figured out, well, why why don't we try making guns people want to buy? And uh, they've been doing <clears throat> some sophisticated research, but also uh, they've been listening to the gun guys in their companies. And, say, and you know, when the gu- a gun guy in a company says, man, I wish I could have that. Oh, wait, I work for a gun company. You know what? <laughs> we, we, we could build that. And, or <clears throat> you get successive waves. You know, the, in, in 380 ACP pistols, you had the, the Ruger LCP. Mm-hmm. Then other people said, well, <laughs> Ruger can't make enough of them. Maybe, maybe, maybe we should try that. Uh, and now we're seeing this, this wave of 9 millimeters coming out, these single-stack 9 millimeters. And, you know, if you have a 380 ACP and you can have a 9 millimeter that's only a little bit bigger, mm-hmm. and, you know, it's a 9 millimeter. Right. Um, why not? Uh, Springfield Armory, the XDS, uh, the single-stack 45, great little gun. Yeah. Uh, so carry guns are pretty hot, but I've been talking to gun dealers and gun manufacturers and uh, just consumers, even guys on my son's, you know, dads on my son's lacrosse teams or Boy Scouts and you know, they're, they're buying everything. And I don't know if it's a shift change in our culture. You know, you look at, uh, at television. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, at the, NRA, uh, at the uh, SHOT Show, I ended up hanging out with the guys from Gold Rush. Right. And they're big-time gun guys, yeah. you know. And you start looking at shows like Top Shot. You look at... Um, uh, I mean, Top um, Shot has a spinoff now. Yeah, uh, Top You know, guns. it's amazing. Yeah. And yeah, that's right. And they're bringing the guys back. And uh, Ian Harrison, you know, the first winner, yep. uh, is on there a lot. He works for Crimson Trace now. Yeah. He, uh, and then you, you just start looking at all of these shows that involve firearms, uh, Sons of Guns. Mm-hmm. You know, the uh, Discovery Channel, History Channel, and other places have realized that, wow, people kind of like guns. Guns on TV are kind of cool. <laughs> and I think it's, 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 it's work that, that, we've, that we've laid, obviously, mm-hmm. uh, as, and uh, since the Heller decision, the McDonald decision, it's very clear that there is a Second Amendment right to own firearms. We knew it all along, of course. uh, Now others are starting to pick up on this fact. And the funny thing is is Hollywood and New York television executives, um, they they, they really like uh, ratings. Right, exactly. Because ratings, uh, we're still capitalists, I think, uh, translate to dollars and uh, getting men to watch television. Uh, You know, I don't watch The Real Housewives of anything. Right. Sorry. Right. You know, no offense. But what about the Real Housewives of Camp Perry? Would you watch that? Uh, no. no okay. I've, I've been to Camp. Well, actually, you know what? I, I tried. Might. If 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 they stayed in the huts, if they stayed in the huts, because then it would be like Frontier Village. You know, it's like, wow, is that asbestos? Yes, it is. No, I'm kidding. I think they ripped all that out. But um, you know, our culture is changing, and uh, they're, they're, you're, the, these companies are selling 22s. They're selling sporting shotguns. Mm-hmm. If everybody's worried about a looming gun ban. If that's the only reason, why are over-under shotguns selling? Right. Uh, and I think that it's just a general uh, appreciation uh, for the Second Amendment and, and the fact that shooting is fun. Yeah. And uh, there's a lot of good guns at very competitive prices. You know, I got to tell you, when you talk about the TV uh, aspect of this, you know, I, it, it's it's hard not to notice uh, the, the the shows that are out there. But 
But even beyond the shows that, that deal with firearms as a core component, um, you know, the uh, the No Reservations episode, which is, a, you know, it's a food show. Right, uh, right. But, you oh, know, yeah. But Anthony Great Bourdain show, hanging out with Ted Nugent, they must replay that <laughs> like every weekend on the Travel Channel. I've seen Anthony or Andrew Zimmern on Bizarre Foods going hunting. Uh, even on Modern Family, that sitcom on yeah, ABC, right, right, right. They had an episode where you know one of the actually both of the moms in the Modern Family go to the range and they know how to shoot and they have fun and it wasn't you know I mean there, there really is as you say there really is I think this cultural shift now where um, it's not scary it, it's not forbidding. Uh, it, you know, this is something that Americans, I think, want to be able to do by and large. They want to know that they can be responsible enough, that they can go out to the range and have fun. And they're seeing more of their friends and neighbors do this. And I think now, you know, I mean, we started seeing the spike in late 2008. So now we're, we're you know, four years into this. Uh, I've got to think that there are a lot of Americans out there who know somebody who over the past couple of years has become a gun owner. And, they, and now they're starting to think, well, you know, I, I've always wanted to do that. I could do that. You know, it's funny. The um, uh, I don't know if you knew this, Cam. Shooting's pretty fun. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know if you knew that. That's that's one of the reasons I got into yeah. this. Uh, it's not just you know for for the lifestyle. The uh, uh, you know I've taken a lot of kids shooting over the past year or two, and mm-hmm. the things that I've had them shoot are are the tactical twenty twos. You know, I've got one of the Umarex uh, HK MP fives. Mm-hmm. You know, you have this 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 generation of young people that has been playing Call of Duty and. You know, first-person per- shooters, plenty of guns, people. There's some you know, some squishy areas there as far as the association is concerned. But but what it does do is create an interest in firearms. And if through NRA-certified instructors or just responsible adults, you can introduce uh, young people who are captivated uh, mm-hmm. by firearms. You know, Call of Duty is the most successful franchise in history, oh, in yeah. entertainment history. You know, you... You, you look at a very popular movie and it makes, you know, a couple hundred million bucks. Right. And, you know, uh, and you got like a billion dollars in video games. and, and uh, But, you know, you take kids out and you hand them, a, hand them that, that HK and you let them go whack, you know, and they slap the charging handle and then, uh, then you let them shoot. And, and you've got them. You know, you, mm-hmm. they, 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 it's real. You teach the safety. You teach the responsibility. But this isn't something they're doing, you know, in the basement. You know, this is something they are outside. Yep. Uh, they are uh, being trusted with responsibility. And the reaction I've had is they just want to shoot more. Yeah. No, I, I'm with you. You know, I mean, uh, I've got an 11-year-old who, you know, plays Call of Duty all the time. And, and I, I'm with you. There is, you know, as a parent, you get a little concerned about, okay, well, if you're, you know, playing this, you know, an hour a day, four days a week, uh, is this going to have an impact on you? But I found that, you know, actually going to the range is so much better than a video game, <laughs> you know? And, and my son says, oh, it's, it's so much better than a video game. Uh, and, and they do, I, I think, you know, the kids are craving this responsibility. Uh, you know, there's, I wonder too, Mark, if what one of the things that we're not seeing culturally in terms of youth shooters is, Almost a uh, a revolt or a rebellion against the helicopter parenting, <laughs> yeah. where you know parents are uh, uh, afraid to let their kids walk across the street, even with them, you know, holding their hand. And we're talking twelve and thirteen year old kids, parents who actually want to give their kids uh, some additional responsibility, uh, and these kids are showing that they can actually do it. Uh, and again, it's a great father son or uh, mother daughter or mother son or father daughter uh, uh, you know opportunity to spend some time together too yeah no i'd agree i you know uh, every time i go out to west virginia uh, with my kids mm-hmm. sometimes we bring their friends and it's like, are we going to shoot 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 and you know that that's something that each and every nra member can do uh, you know, if you do it right, yep. you know, you, you, uh, you don't want to be, uh, uh, that Jack wit on YouTube handing, uh, <laughs> no. a, 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 someone a, a 44 Magnum, uh, for the first time. Uh, no. that's, that's probably not the way to do it. But, uh, if, if somebody's interested in going shooting with it, you should take them because they need, they need to have some ownership in, 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 in what we are. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's something that everybody can do and it's not real hard. All right, so uh, before we run out of time here, uh, one last question here. Um, do you see the, the, the gun sales uh, remaining steady? Do you see them going up even more over the rest of this year? You know, it's funny. Uh, when you have back orders to the point that you won't take back orders anymore, I'm, <laughs> right. I'm, not, I'm not sure how you say, oh, well, it's going to increase. Um, that was a very smart thing that Ruger did. It did a great thing for their stock price, but also it allowed them to catch up on the infrastructure. And that's... Uh, 
I would say, especially with the new products, is a very new product uh, driven year. Mm-hmm. Uh, the new products that companies have, the, the new products from last year that are finally becoming available, mm-hmm. uh, I would say it's it's going to continue. Uh, ammunition, uh, we uh, usually, uh, when it comes to an ammunition scarcity, the canary in the coal mine is primers. You know, people right. go, oh, I can't buy primers. You know, uh, obviously, you know, George Soros is buying all the primers. No, no, other hand loaders are buying them before you, and they're <laughs> sitting on them. Okay, George Soros probably doesn't know what a primer is. Okay, um, but there, there, we're starting to hear about shortages of certain calibers, uh, and whether it's guys stockpiling or guys just shooting more, I don't know. But yeah. uh, interest is up across the board uh, in just about every category, and I. I think there's a little bit of, of legislation. I think there's a little doomsday prepper uh, kind of thing. Love that show, by the way. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I need more water. And, uh, but, uh, you know, there are more people enjoying the shooting sports, and one of the ways they're doing it is buying new guns, buying ammunition. Yeah. And, uh, again, there, there is some fear out there, but that, can't, that doesn't explain all of this. All right. Now, speaking of fear, I guess we've got one more question for you because you're the guy who would know. Uh, I've had a lot of people ask about a uh, very large order for ammunition placed, I believe, by uh, DHS. I think it was 450 million rounds uh, through ATK. Mm-hmm. And I've had a lot of folks say, okay, Cam, what's going on? This, is, this, is, you know, this seems like a really, really large amount of ammo for a, a government agency to buy. Uh, now, I, I pointed out that the civilian market goes through – Billions of rounds every year, so it is. You know, you got to think of the the scale of what we're talking about. Uh, it, does that purchase raise any eyebrows? No, not at all. As a matter of fact, a good friend of mine is uh, one of the chief tactical trainers on the East Coast for mm-hmm. DHS. And uh, you know, you got to remember that's customs, immigration, border patrol. And I, I don't know if you knew this, but there's an economic theory out there that says if you're if you're going to need a lot of something, right? If you buy more of it, you get a better price. <laughs> and um, you know, I, I, th- that's not an ominous thing. Uh, 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 federal law enforcement agencies need to train. Yeah. And also, uh, it's not like the stuff goes bad, okay? <laughs> I mean, you know, you store it right, and, uh, you know, if you need to shoot it two years from now, well, guess what? You get to shoot it two years from now. Right. So, no, that doesn't uh, freak me out at all, and I'll ask the, uh, the ATK guys when I see them. I haven't seen them yet at this show. But that's a big order, big feather in their cap. Uh, and like I said, you're looking at a lot of federal agents wrapped under that. Well, umbrella. and also yeah. just the Federal Law Enforcement Training Center down in, in Georgia. I mean, they go through a lot of ammo. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'm sleeping pretty well right now. All right. Well, listen, Mark, I appreciate you coming on the program. Uh, and I'm glad you're sleeping well because you're not going to get a lot of sleep over the next few uh, days. No, no, sir, I'm not. But thanks a lot, Cam. <laughs> Have a good time out here. Thank you so much, sir. Mark Keefe, Editor in Chief of American Rifleman, host of American Rifleman Television as well.